My name is Dr. Chris Fox, and this is Dr. Chanel Fischetti, and I would like to show you guys this butterfly ultrasound. And uh, a lot of people ask me, is this thing real? Can it really be three transducers in one? Is this some kind of gimmicky thing? And I'd like to just do a kind of a survey here of uh, my model's uh, abdomen, chest, neck, and his popliteal fossa to show you that indeed it looks like you can do all three things. So I'll start here in the abdomen, and I'm going to go to presets and bring it to the abdominal preset. And I'm going to look over here at his Morrison's pouch. And uh, yeah, you can see here, here's his liver. We see his uh, diaphragm there, kidney. And takes a deep breath. I can see his lower pulvis kidney on the screen there. You even see the psoas muscle back there behind the kidney. Looks great. Uh, I'm going to come over here now and change to cardiac. I'm actually going to do a sub xiphoid view of his heart. So preset, turn it to cardiac, select. And whenever I do cardiac sub xiphoid view, I start with the liver. And I just rotate the transducer around. The heart's kind of hanging off the bottom of the screen. I'm going to change my depth so I can see the entire heart. And as he takes a breath, we'll start to see the heart a little bit easier. Go ahead and take a deep breath. There we go. Right there is perfect. Maybe a little bit more depth. Yeah, it takes a little tweaking of the probe, and I start to see the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. I see the valves there. I see the liver at the top of the screen. Yeah, I'm very happy with that image. Some no pericardial effusion there. Looks great. Since I'm already in cardiac, I may as well come over and take a look at his parasternal long axis on his heart. And oh, I got to change my depth. Changing the depth is super easy. I just drag my finger down. I don't have to reach over to another machine or anything. It's right in front of me, which I like. Left atrium, left ventricle, I see the mitral valve smacking that septum. I see the aortic outflow track there. RV, I see the septum, posterior wall. Looks great. Good contractility. And again, I'm in cardiac mode, so I may as well just take a look at his apical four chamber. So if you could roll on your left side for me and uh, with your, yeah, exactly. Just roll right over there and uh, roll a little bit more. Roll a little bit more on your side. There we go. Thank you. And uh, yep, here we got a pretty good apical four. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so now we can see the with the 16 centimeters of depth, maybe 17 here. Very easy to adjust the depth. Just to my finger, my thumb takes it up and down. And if I want a little more gain out of that, I would just scrape to the right. And uh, yeah, now we're seeing, yeah, it's pretty, it's really good, actually, a four-chambered view. Uh, and, uh, and just to demonstrate the fact that we can do the color, I get the color question all the time. We'll come across here, and I'll drag that uh, color right over that aortic outflow track. You can see that blue jet. As he breathes in and out, it kind of comes and goes. But you can see that, go ahead and breathe out. You can see that blue jet go right down that uh, aortic outflow track. All right. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and look at his bladder now. And I'm going to go ahead and put that preset on. It takes a second to switch over to the preset. Indicate the patient's right. And now I'm fanning in fearly. And this is where his bladder is pretty empty. But I found it. It's right there. I'm going to go ahead and decrease that depth. I mean, it's only got a, a cc or two in it, but that's the idea. You can see the bladder there, the anechoic structure there on the screen. Okay, so from there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at his uh, gallbladder. So I'm going to go back to abdominal preset and subxiphoid approach as I do a subcostal sweep. And in my subcostal sweep, I'm fanning through his liver, looking for that gallbladder. Come around here and fairly up there, and we're starting to see it. And uh, you can see that gallbladder in a longitudinal plane. Rotate to a transverse all the way through, top to bottom. Go ahead and take a deep-ish breath. See if we can't see that a little bit easier. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah, very nice. And now I'm going to go look at after that portal vein and stretches out. There it is. Right on top of that uh, portal vein, I see the common bile duct. So I can go ahead and uh, freeze that image All right, when I like it the most. There. And uh, yeah, back it up a little bit. Go backwards. My first time working with this um, cine back effect, I wasn't sure. I kind of like scraped on the screen, nothing happened, and I saw that little timeline thing. And this is pretty cool. So I can go frame by frame, kind of like I do when I'm editing video on my computer. It looks like this, little thumbnails. And I find the thumbnail I like the most. Yeah, maybe say that one there. Yeah, hit select. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, enlarge that in image. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a measurement. And here's my measurement tool. And I can, I can grab that measurement tool, one caliper there, grab the other caliper, and bring it down just so it lands correctly. Uh, and that's a, a four millimeter common bile duct, which is normal, obviously. So 
Yeah, I was able to find the common bile duct and measure it using one hand. Uh, unfreeze, and we're live scanning again. Let me go ahead and select uh, the abdominal mode to look at his aorta. Here I am in a, um, I see a longitudinal view here. There's his aorta stretching out across the screen right underneath his duodenum. So my, his duodenum is up here. Um, and then the, uh, there's your aorta there. As it comes down, we can see the whole tube lengthening out there, decrease my depth as I go distally. So that, that same vessel, the aorta, and I want to look in a transverse view. And uh, yeah, I can see here the, uh, the spine shadow and the uh, superior mesenteric arteries on top of it there and pushing down pretty hard. But I see the aorta, spine shadow, and I'm just over a loop of bowel so it goes away. I come off that loop of bowel and I can see in the transverse view the aorta in the center of the screen. I'm decreasing my depth as the aorta does get more superficial as I go distally. And as I come down here, boom, it just bifurcated. All right, so that was the transverse view of the aorta. Now, from the aorta, you know, I'm going to go look at his neck now. I'm going to change over to the, um, we'll put it on the uh, small parts. Come up here and take a look at his neck. And I like this, uh, this anatomy here. It's very easy to, uh, to get to. And uh, first of all, I'm um, looking at his thyroid. So I'm fanning through his thyroid here. We can see the carotid next to the thyroid and then the IJ over here. IJ is uh, sort of easily compressible there as I move through it. Um, here's your thyroid, the isthmus of the thyroid, coming across right on top of the trachea. And as I come over here, we can see all the strap muscles there in the neck. And I can see his left lobe of his thyroid as well. And I see his left carotid, his left IJ. And uh, let's see here. So below that, um, that left thyroid is the esophagus. And I'm actually able to see the esophagus there directly underneath his thyroid. That's a short axis. I'm going to go long axis on that esophagus now. And let's see. We can see that esophagus stretch out across the screen. There's some air in it as well. You can see the, almost like a beeline or two from the air fluid interface inside the esophagus. He went ahead and swallowed, and you can see some of that spit going right down the esophagus there. That's good. And, uh, you know, I'm going to switch to the cardiac, uh, the carotid, carotid mode here, and I'm going to look at his carotid artery. I usually start in a longitudinal plane in the carotid, and so first of all, the first vessel I see here, that, that's easily compressible. That's clearly not the carotid. There's your IJ there. If I go more medial to that, though, there I get to my carotid. In fact, there's the bulb of the, uh, the carotid as well as I'm going more superiorly there. So with the carotid, maybe I can decrease my depth a little bit. And uh, just to show the color here, get the color on there. Yeah, you could see it's easily lighting up very nicely there as we're scanning through the carotid artery, going more inferiorly now as I'm moving down his neck. And uh, exit that color mode. And then I'm going to look over at his IJ again. I just like this, this view so much. Here's my, again, here's my thyroid carotid and the right IJ. So if I was going to do a procedure on his IJ, this is sort of the location that I'd be doing that here. And as I come down more inferiorly, I see there's a valve there. We can see the valves moving back and forth. Here, I'm going to turn the gain up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see, over gain it slightly. And you can see that valve there. You don't see valves too often in vessels. It's pretty exciting to see that. Um, but that's the level of detail resolution that this, this is able to do. From that valve and a transverse, I'm going to go see how they look in a See if it looks any different longitudinally here. Something I'd be showing my medical students. Um, you can see the valve leaflets there now, the longitudinal pattern as the, pro as the sound gets more uh, in plane with the valve leaflet itself. So, and you can see it come up. Yeah, you can see it come up and co-app the, uh, the other valve as he sort of breathes in and out. Good. Okay, so from there, um, I'd like to rule out a pneumothorax. So I'm going to go to presets, uh, lung, select lung, grab some gel. And we can see here, actually, uh, the intercostal uh, space with the pleural line there at the top of the screen. And as he reason out, we see the heart come into view. I'm going to get a little bit more, maybe more superior here. Here we go. And you can see the pleural line and then uh, A-line, A-line. So and that pleural line slides nicely. I'm going to take a look at his, his right side here. And again, here's that pleural line, A-line, A-line. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that pleural line. And you can see the lung sliding back and forth. Um, go ahead and breathe out. Yeah, we see that uh, ants marching all over the place. There are some beelines going back there. So, um, you yeah, know, we go ahead and 
take another look here. There we go. Just for fun, I'll put some M mode on that. Okay, and we see what I like about this machine too is that I'm seeing live B mode and M mode simultaneously. So as he takes another breath, there we go. We see that granular appearance consistent with no pneumothorax. All right. So that's the lung mode. Um, and then, uh, you know, go back to vascular uh, or you know, let's go back to vascular or even small parts. And we'll take a look here uh, behind his uh, popliteal fossa. Oh, thanks, Chanel. And we'll take a look behind his popliteal fossa here and see if we can't rule out a DVT. Um, yeah, so here I am in the popliteal fossa and I'm starting to see some vascular. I'm going to turn up the gain a little bit here, but I can, I can see the vein comes to the top and the pop and uh, it's easily compressible there. See that vein compress and then ease up, it fills again, compress, ease up, and I'm like going through his popliteal fossa here. Compress, ease up, yeah. So no clot in the popliteal fossa, very good. So what did we do? We did a lot with this one probe. Um, we, we started with the abdominal setting, we looked at the uh, we looked at the liver and the kidney and the interface there, Morrison's pouch, like a typical uh, fast scan window. We saw the diaphragm. We saw the upper and lower poles of the kidney. We even saw the psoas muscle. I came over, looked at a sub xiphoid view of his heart, and I uh, switched to the cardiac mode, saw the soft sub xiphoid view of his heart, and uh, all four chambers, even the valves, and there's no pericardial effusion. Uh, in that same cardiac mode, I went over. I looked at parasternal long axis of his heart, and then I looked at apical four chamber view of his heart. We saw some color flow there on the uh, outflow track. I went over and looked at a spleno-renal area, um, just marching across the body. Saw the diaphragm, left diaphragm, and the uh, left upper and lower poles of his uh, left kidney. Uh, we came around, we looked at his bladder. We then uh, looked at his uh, aorta, uh, both uh, transverse and uh, longitudinal planes of his aorta. Um, you know, from there, we, uh, I think we looked at his lungs, and we saw there was uh, no pneumothorax, no B lines. It was good lung sliding. We saw that we could do simultaneous M mode and B mode. Um, we looked at his carotid and looked at the bulb of his carotid. We saw the flow there. We saw his IJ. We saw a valve in his IJ. That was really exciting. We saw the, uh, the thyroid, the isthmus, the other thyroid. And then we came down, we saw his esophagus, both short and long axis. Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't even uh, get to a lot of things. We didn't get to ocular. We didn't get to testicular. We didn't do you know, a lot of the other procedural things I could do with this here, uh, but uh, we, did a, we did a lot of things uh, in a relatively short period of time using, uh, almost magically, uh, one transducer. And so, it's pretty, it's pretty legit, <laughs> I think, personally. So, uh, yeah, very exciting.